when the visor on my Shoei RF 1200 uh, started to get a little old and needed replacement this is the transitions uh, visor so uh, they say after about two years it probably uh, starts to lose its um, darkening uh, function and uh, it doesn't lighten actually uh, as much uh, you know in the in the lighter I don't know if you can see that but it's slightly it's got a slight tinge to it so it's not whitening or lightening as much as it used to do when it was new so I was thinking maybe time to replace this visor uh, when you check out the prices of the visors the visor is close to 200 bucks so I was thinking hmm that plus the fact that there are a couple of features on the RF1200 that I kind of like wish were a little bit different um, so when I threw all that together I says hmm maybe I can uh, look at getting uh, an inexpensive uh, other helmet to try in the meanwhile that will cost as much as a visor um, so we're look, talking about a $200 helmet okay and yesterday uh, my new helmet arrived let me show you what it is Looking at the two helmets, uh, it appears as though the Shoei is slightly bigger than the Sedici helmet. Uh, looking at it from the profile as well as the uh, top views, uh, I think that you could see, I'm not going to measure it, I think you can see that there's a slight difference there in size. Um, height wise, maybe the Sedici sits a little bit taller, but uh, hard to say. Let me measure the uh, weight differences now. As you can see, the Shoei weighs four pounds even right now, but it's got a pin lock lens on the visor and it's got uh, uh, this bracket here as well as the rigging inside for my motor vlogging. It's got that bracket for my packed up post, uh, packed up bolt. So that adds to the weight a little bit. The Sedici comes in at three pounds, nine and a half ounces. So it's a bit lighter and uh, by the time I add a the, the additional pin lock lens, which is uh, expected on Monday or so, and uh, also my motor vlogging uh, setup, it'll bring the weight up a bit. So probably close to the RF 1200. What I'm going to do now is uh, remove this film from the from the visor. I wanted to do that on the video. Uh, don't know why, but so you peel this peel this off and it kind of protects the visor during shipping but don't forget also that there is also a film on the inside this one here so I'm going to peel that off as well that might not be so easy to peel off but once you find the edge so pulling this off from the side it's as easy as that and the helmet is ready to go um, as you can see it does come with one of these breath guards here and the breath guard is going to be more useful in winter than in summer and uh, so I'm going to pull this off I think you just pull it backwards and there's some snaps or something like that on the inside uh, revzilla.com has a video on how this Sedici Strata 2 helmet is but there's some little posts, three little posts in there that fit into these little holes here and you can just pull it off. So that way when you close this down or when you crack it you get some airflow straight into your face. One of the drawbacks about this helmet is it doesn't have a, a good detent just at the city riding position what they call the city riding. You've got to actually move it up you know halfway and hope that you're not going fast enough for the breeze to blow it down so there's not good enough detents on the sides uh, to keep it uh, open you either have to help have it fully open or you know futz with it at some intermediate spot and it might drop down like that so that's one of the criticisms of this helmet I knew that going in so let us take this for a ride and see how quiet it is and I'll report back 
Um, obviously, I don't have my moto vlogging set up on it, so I won't be able to, to record the ride as I go with the helmet, but uh, I'll finish up this video with a little discussion uh, as to how quiet it was and how it seemed on the ride. One of the problems that I read about before buying this is that uh, this tends to fall off when you take the helmet off. When you pull the helmet off, your chin coming out pulls this out, out of its uh, position. That never happens with the Shoei. And this one is affixed by one, two, three, four. It looks like four nubs that stick into, into the front here. And it appears as though they like to come out easily. Uh, I don't know if the solution is to stick that, glue this thing in. We'll see. But I can't be putting this back in every time. So I'm here in Burroughs Park, uh, trying the new Sedici Strata 2 helmet. Uh, alongside my Shoei uh, RF 1200 helmet which is in the background here which I'm about to put on and continue my ride for a little for a little for a similar distance as the first part of the ride where I had the, uh, the Sedici on um, it was basically through subdivisions and slow back roads no speeds higher than 50 miles an hour or so and uh, initial impressions were that uh, the Sedici is a quieter helmet than the RF-1200. Um, definitely around the ears, it's much quieter. It sounds as though I have additional air muffs on top of my earplugs. Uh, so the sound back there is fairly dead. Um, uh, the sound in front is about the same with the chin vents open. Uh, with the chin vents closed, the sound in front, uh, I think it's quieter than the RF-1200 as well. So, so far, it's a quieter helmet. It's a smaller helmet than the RF-1200. The distance from my mouth to the chin bar here is closer on the Sedici than on the RF-1200. So, if I stick my lips out, you know, purse my lips, I can touch the chin bar here, whereas it's not so easy to do that on the, uh, on the um, RF-1200. The front visor is definitely uh, fully open or fully closed affair. Uh, there are no intermediate stops in between that'll stay in place. It'll drop down into the closed position as soon as you crack it a little bit. So be prepared for that. Uh, the sunshade or the little visor inside, uh, <laughs> it needs to be darker and it needs to be just a little bit bigger. Um, the bigger part, uh, the size of it, I'm not so worried about because uh, you can get accustomed to that. You just got to tilt your head down a little bit more and look through the meat of the thing. Um, but the thing is, it's not as dark as it could be. It could be darker and uh, basically when you drop it down, it does cut down on the, on the uh, intensity of the light reaching your eyes. It does. Uh, and it turns it uh, blue because of the tint. So it's more blue, cooler. It's a cooler, uh, you know, vision. Um, but really it needs to be darker to be fully effective. Uh, what else can I say? Oh, the vents are very easy to operate when on the way. Very good. Nice, easy controls, easy to reach and uh, move easily. Um, the little switch at the side that moves the, the lens shade up and down, uh, that takes some getting used to to find it, but once you find it, it's not too bad. The chin curtain, I think, works pretty well. Uh, it's It stops more air going in from the front. Um, I think it's better than the, than the Shoei. The Shoei chin, chin curtain is, is actually a piece of junk. I'll show you in a minute. The only chin curtain that Shoei offers is this mesh. Mesh might be good in summer, but is useless in winter number one and number two is useless for cutting down on wind noise so that's a dud as far as i'm concerned with, with regard to the the show erf 1200 the one on the sedici is much better so what i'll do now is i'll put the show e on uh, right through some more subdivisions uh, do a comparison of the noise test uh, and confirm whether the, the sedici is actually quieter than the show e uh, you know it's slow 
slower speeds. And then before I get to the highway, I'm gonna switch helmets again, put the uh, Sedici back on, and see how it does at cruising speeds or touring speeds, typically around 75 to 80 miles an hour. Uh, see how noisy it is there. All my tests are done with the windshield of the RS in the lower position right now. So I'm going to do that, continue doing that in the lower position at the slower speeds. When I get onto the highway, I might raise it up a bit because sometimes when I'm touring, even in the hotter months, I'll put it up just to just to get a little bit more quietness in there, uh, you know, especially if it's not too, too hot outside. Um, so I'll try it both ways when I get onto the highway. Here I am stuck at some random spot on the I-45 feet away. Uh, you can see that behind me there. There's the I-45 and there's the feeder road. And uh, so I just rode through the woodlands. Uh, it was a nice picture of the place to stop. This is it. <laughs> but what can I say? So I just finished riding with the Shoei on the 1200. And the Shoei on the 1200 is definitely noisier. Uh, a lot of the noise is coming through the front where that uh, mesh chin curtain is. And also, uh, it's probably leaking around the sides, which is one of the principal reasons why I bought the new helmet with a small neck, neck opening. Um, so, definitely, I'm hearing uh, wind uh, by my ears, whereas with the, with the ceviche there, there was, it was muffled like back here. All the noise in the ceviche is in front. Uh, when you close the vent, on the RF 1200, it makes no difference really to the noise level. It does make a big difference to the airflow, uh, but to the noise level, not so much because the noise is coming from here and uh, the sides getting up to my ears. So I can definitively say, so far, I'm still speed riding that the city is a quieter level. Airflow-wise, yeah, there is no helmet on the market that's going to be, I think, an RF-1200 airflow. That thing flows so much air, I have had bugs flying through the, the, the chin vent. Uh, <laughs> it really does flow a lot of air. Uh, I did close the brow vent on the RF-1200 just to make things a little bit uh, more even, because the ceviche does not have a brow vent on it. Uh, it doesn't have a brow vent right here. It just has these upper vents here and the chin vent, of course, over here. <laughs> um, so I kept the chin vent open or closed with the RF-1200, just as I did with the, uh, with the Sedici. Now, with the Sedici, with the vent, the chin vent open, there's a kind of a, 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 a noisy, you know, it's not, it's not louder than the RF-1200, but all the noise is in front, like I said before. And it's kind of a, a deeper type sound. Uh, not unpleasant, but it's just there. The minute you close it, whoop, that goes. And the sound drops off dramatically in front. So that makes it even more quiet. So in the winter time, when you've got your vents closed uh, or, or it's not fully open, this is going to be totally pretty damn quiet. Um, anyway. My, my, my uh, next step is to put the uh, ceviche back on and go on the I-45 and do some high-speed runs and see how it performs on the high speed with the uh, windshield of the bike in the lower position as it is right now and then in the, in the base position. Home after doing my high-speed runs uh, on the ceviche helmet. One of the things I forgot to mention was uh, compared to the RF-1200, I think that these uh, chin cushions are a little bit further back than the RF-1200. The RF-1200 is a little bit forward, a little bit more forward, which means I feel um, that if you were to get a frontal impact here, uh, you'd be better protected in the RF-1200 because uh, there's more padding in front by your cheeks, whereas here it's more towards the back, just very slightly, and the helmet could push back easier uh, and contact your, your mouth and your chin. So what can I conclude about the, uh, the Sedici helmet? Um, overall, it's a thumbs up. That's the first thing that I can say. Um, 
for a 200 and uh say a 200 dollar helmet um uh, it's it's a great value um despite the fact that the uh the, the drop down visor is not dark enough or uh, it could be a little bit bigger i'm not so worried about that what is most impressive about this helmet is its quietness. It is quieter than the RF 1200, even at speed. Um, I was on the uh, highway uh, <clears throat> uh, doing a average 80 miles an hour and cruising with the windshield in both the lower and the upper positions. In the lower position, uh, there was a lot of, uh, that's the maximum noise, uh, lower position with the chin vent open. Okay, in all the tests, I had the, the, the top vents at the top of the uh, helmet open. So uh, for both helmets, that was not, uh, there's no difference there. Uh, but with the chin vent open uh, and the windshield in the lower position, uh, there's maximum airflow and uh, there is most noise. However, the noise level is no greater uh, than with the RF 1200 in the same situation. As a matter of fact, because I, as I mentioned before, because the noise in the RF 1200 is more around the ears as well, uh, it's probably noisier. Uh, but without having them on and, and putting a, a sound meter or something like that inside the helmet, you can't really tell. It's just subjective. But when I put that uh, Sedici back on and I had it, uh, you know, and I closed the chin vent, which you don't want to do in summer, but I close the chin vent, very quiet. Uh, the showy, when I close the chin vent uh, with the showy, makes no real difference to the noise. Um, so overall, and then when, of course, I raise the uh, the windshield today in the upper position, uh, it is quieter, uh, you know, vent open or vent closed. Uh, it's quieter. So overall, right now, it's as it stands, it's a lighter helmet. It's... Uh, very comfortable. I must say, when I came home, there was no pressure points anywhere. It was like the, the helmet was already broken in. Uh, both helmets are extra large. And um, I think that this helmet has two uh, shell sizes. The Shoei has three. And in both cases, the extra large and up are the larger uh, shell size. So um, this is as big as it's going to get. And it's a little bit smaller than the RF 1200. Still love my RF 1200. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that was very nice and comfortable and uh, and everything when I put it on. But this other helmet is different. It's nice. It's quieter. And, um, you know, it should it should work uh, very well. Um, it does. Uh, the colors do match my climb latitude outfit. And, uh, you know, so it kind of suggests that I should use this as my touring helmet when I wear my, my outfit, if, if, if aesthetics uh, matters. Not that it does very much to me. Um, <clears throat> but performance wise, helmet is very good. The D-rings, I don't like double D-rings uh, for the chin strap, but it's just a matter of getting back used to it again. Um, they work fine. Uh, and uh, I don't know what else to say. Um, for a full review of the Sedici Strata 2 helmet, you should watch the uh, the Revzilla video. They, they show about pulling out all of the liners and all of that kind of stuff, which I don't have to repeat. I just wanted to give you a slightly different perspective of actual real-world usage of the helmet, especially when compared with one of the most uh, a popular uh, and best helmets on the, on the market right now, the Shoei RF 1200. Um, I said that they're a good complement to one another. Um, I wouldn't say that the Sedici is better than, than, than the RF 1200, but it is quieter and uh, it's lighter. So those two factors, if they're very important to you and you don't want to spend twice as much money, you can get this uh, helmet here. I, I fully uh, uh, endorse it. Uh, you can get this helmet, save yourself 50% uh, uh, because the, the, the RF uh, 1200 is about uh, close to $500, uh, whereas this one is, is 200 bucks. So uh, you'll save yourself a bunch of money. So that's all uh, for now. Uh, the next video I'll probably do is when I start fitting my motor vlogging, uh, when I fit my motor vlogging setup on this. I have ordered uh, a second helmet kit from Cardo so that I can transfer my pack top bolt from my uh, Shoei onto this helmet as I need, as I need to. So what that will uh, come with is it will come with the bracket, it'll come with a boom mic, and it'll also come with regular speakers. I think might be 30, 30 something millimeter speakers as opposed to the standard 40 millimeter speakers. Um, 
if the sound is not acceptable, uh, I will probably get the the uh, optional uh, um, 45 millimeter speakers, which I did a review of, and which I didn't find any better than the 40s. Uh, but maybe I'll go with that, and and so at least I have two different types of or sizes of of, of uh, JBL speakers. But uh, we'll see. That's eighty dollars more, and that's uh, further down the road. I I don't know if I want to go into that level of expense. Uh, the the mount for the uh, camera is going to be slightly different. I can't mount it right on the chin bar of the Sedici helmet because it's got too much curvature, too much shape. Uh, so I'll have to put it off to the side and have the arm come around to the front uh, so that I can position the camera again in front. Because I, I do like that vantage point. And not only that, it takes the camera out of the slipstream. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous video, but if you have the camera like this, it gets a lot of twisting motion and it tends to pull want, want to pull the camera off. As a matter of fact, it did it did pull pull uh, the GoPro off one time uh, when I had it mounted at the side so from now on I always mount all my cameras towards the front where uh, the slipstream goes either side and it presses the camera if anything more onto the onto the uh, onto the uh, helmet but more on that later so that would be the next video uh, regarding this uh, particular helmet that's all for now